Welcome back to the channel, my name is Benji, and today we're gonna to be talking about bluefin tuna. I'm at Save On Tackle with my friend Anthony, and Anthony's gonna be breaking down rods and reels today. This is part one of a four-part bluefin tuna series. And before we go any further, Anthony's gonna be opening up the shop from April 19th to 23rd to have a special Benji Kim fishing discount for anyone that comes in and wants to stock up on their offshore fishing gear. This is gonna be in-store special prices only. Anthony will take care of you. Just be sure to mention the special code word Bluefin when you come into the shop. Tell him you watched the video and that you saw this segment and Anthony will take care of you. So as I mentioned, we're gonna be covering rods and reels for Bluefin Tuna and Anthony is gonna take it away and break down the best rods and reels for all the different applications and techniques. Anthony, as we're already gonna be talking about, there's so many different techniques and so many different nuances to this game. So Anthony's gonna break it down as simple as we can with the short time that we have. So Anthony, do you wanna take it away? Absolutely, thank you Benji. All right, so what we've done here is we've compiled some combinations, some rods and reels. We highly recommend a two speed. That little button makes a world of difference when you hook a fish maybe bigger than you expected or you just wanna catch that fish and, and get them in quick and try to get that second one going because as we know, those bites don't always last the longest. The way I build my lineup is line classes. Instead of worrying about what size tuna they are or anything like that, I'll set up a, uh, a 30 pound setup for fly lining when they get real picky. Price points vary, but I recommend a two speed. I have a Pen Torque 25, you can see it fits in my hand pretty comfortably. This is a little overkill for a normal 30 pound setup. But if you hook into like a 60 or an 80 pound bluefin that you didn't anticipate, it's gonna have the line capacity and the drag to handle it. They also make their sister reel, the Fathom, also a two speed reel, uh, a much, much more affordable reel and it handles those fish well. Uh, you pretty much can't get on a boat in Southern California and go chase bluefin and not see those Fathoms on there. They really, really hit it out of the park with that reel for us. From there, we're gonna go up, you know, your, the other technique aside from fly lining that we're seeing a lot of is that sinker rig. So we might be attaching anywhere from a four to an eight ounce sinker onto our lines with a rubber band and dropping those down there and, and waiting to get bit and maybe that two, 300 foot of water. Based on the grade of fish the captain's, you know, giving us, you know, maybe we're on 50, 60 pound fish or 100 pound fish. That's where this Fathom or the Torque 30 come in. So you get a good size reel, it has plenty of line capacity, it's lightweight. We can do it on that 40, 50 pound setup, drop it down there and just wait out, you know, those bluefin. And whether they're 30 pounds or, or they're 100 pounds, the reel has enough line to handle it and enough drag to handle it as well. And when you hook into those bigger models, you got that nice two speed button. From there, I like going over to my Makaira, the 15T. If you know me or you fish with me at all, you know this is one of my absolute favorite reels. A little bit on the heavier side but this thing is an absolute bulletproof tank. The free spool is amazing, so it's one of those crossover reels for me. I can start off fly lining 50 pound or 60 pound if those fish are biting really well. If they sink down, I switch over to that sinker rig on the same reel, plenty of line capacity and a ton of drag. The other thing I love about this reel, it's two speed and it has a big power handle. So for those of us with bigger hands, you could get up, grab onto that reel and really get some leverage when you're pulling on some of these bigger fish. Definitely one of my favorite reels. The next step up from there, I bump up, and this is a half a step up, not in quality, just line capacity. That's gonna bring us to the Torque 40. A uh, little bit taller, nice narrow reel, so you can, you're not working hard to guide that line back and forth, but you're still getting a ton of line capacity. So if we're seeing those 100, 150 pound fish, but they're eating light line. This is a great way to present 50 or 60 pound or even 80 pound fly line baits. And same thing, it crosses over into that uh, sinker rig setup. So great reel. I don't recommend it for a lot of the flat falling and stuff. Some guys are getting away with it, but if you hook one of those 200 pound models, line capacity becomes our biggest issue. Also, this, is, this comes in the Fathom, so it comes in a very, very affordable model or it comes in the fancy pen torque. After there, we're looking at, you know, our, our knife jigs. That's the, the biggest thing going on right now at night, our knife jigs. Um, a 20 size reel is what I'm recommending. It's potluck right now. You could be catching 40 pound fish or you could be bumping up to 150, 200 pound fish uh, or, or bigger. I mean, we saw even bigger last year and we have no idea when those larger models are gonna roll through. So I'm recommending a Makaira 20 or an International 20 or just a 20 size reel. I'm partial to the Makairas. It's just one of the reels I've been fishing for the last six years and I absolutely love it. The internationals gave us an amazing offer as well. Feel them and just see which one fits your hands the best and, and purchase that one. They're very similar in price point. You're just gonna be knife jigging. So dropping down, it's not too wide. Your hand still fits on there. You can guide that line back and forth. 
you hook a bigger model, plenty of line capacity, more than enough drive, more than we're capable of putting to the max. It's got a really nice low gear ratio, so no matter how strong or how, you know, what stage of the fishing ladder you're in, you can definitely pull on those fish and, and it's just comfortable. It's, it's easy to turn that handle when you put that in low gear. So that's our real offerings, some of my favorites anyway. So Anthony, if it's okay for me to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. So um, there really is no purpose for me being in this video, <laughs> but if there is one purpose for me being in this video is I'm actually a new newcomer to the offshore scene and I'm newer to the game. Um, only been on boats for the past two years and have been lucky enough to tug on a couple of tuna. So as a newcomer coming in, I feel like I have questions that maybe some newcomers might have. If there was one reel um, and one style of fishing that someone should be prepared for, um, is there even an answer to that? It's tough to say, hey, this setup does it all. If you're gonna go that route, the Pen Torque or the Pen Fathom 30 offers the best value in terms of price point and line capacity and just the, the free spool and ability to cover a wider selection of this stuff. So if you do hook a 100 grade, a 100 pound grade model, you'll have the line capacity on the reel to do that. But if you hook a 40 pound grade model, you're not overpowering the fish or just oversized where it's big and clunky and not comfortable to fish all day. So it sounds like to me that there's so many different um, styles, it's impossible to pin it down to just one reel for someone that's wanting to start up. But if you're just brand new and wanting to start, you start with one and then you start building it out. Yep. Um, but the bottom line is when it comes to these fish, it's impossible to predict what kind of fish is gonna be biting and how they're gonna be biting. So, you know, fly line, yeah, you should have a fly line, but it's also imperative to also have, you know, a, a flat fall set up, a knife jig set up, because you just don't know until you get out there um, what the fish are gonna be doing. So is, yeah. that, is that pretty accurate to yep. say? So, absolutely. Yeah, so um, thank you so much, Anthony, for covering the reels. Bottom line is, if you're brand new to the game, come into the shop, come into Save on Tackle, especially April 19th through 24th, April 19th through the 23rd. 23rd, yeah. There's gonna be special in-store discounts. Talk to Anthony, mention the word Bluefin, and you saw this video, and he will get you squared away. We can talk all night about gear, but uh, very, very simple and good way to start in terms of understanding what you need. But Anthony, do you wanna talk about some rods that we can pair these reels up to? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of brands, there's a lot of amazing brands, and it's just like shoes, I, I compare that all the time. The rod that works perfect for me might not work perfect for you. You know, we're all built different. We're at points of leverage, you know, the length and all that. I highly recommend just pull on a rod. You'll know when it feels right, when it doesn't hurt you and you can put some good solid pressure on there, that's the right rod for you. Some of our brands that I recommend, uh, we've got United Composite, we've got Phoenix, we've got uh, Calstar, I mean, that, there's some of my personal favorite brands right there. When you're looking at your rods, rod length is important. So we're gonna look for something that's long enough to cast the bait and uh, fight a fish and get around your fellow anglers. If it's too long, it's gonna be hard to navigate the over and under of all the rods that the deckhands are trying to put you through as your fish are spinning in circles and tangling each other up. And then the other thing that you wanna check out and keep, it, keep an eye out for is, is not going too short where your fish is able to do big circles underneath the boat and get caught up in the running gear. So a perfect, like that seven and a half to eight foot rod has really, really made a difference in how many of these fish are being killed. You know, so something for your 30 pound, you're gonna wanna look for something that's rated like that 25 to 60 or like a 15 to 40. One of the rods we pulled, uh, the, the Phoenix Axis 7.8H is rated 25 to 60. You, it's not a 60 pound rod at all. This is really a good, heavy 30 pound rod. You could fish 40 on it if they're, if they're biting good and you wanna bump up. But with these bluefin, we really, really wanna be fishing something that's rated a little heavier than your true 30 pound rod. Some of those 15 to 40s are soft and they're really just a good 30 pound rod and they're a noodle. When you hook into these bluefin, they're bent in half and you have no leverage to pull on these fish. So one of my favorite is super lightweight, it's got a good springy tip, so it's easy to cast a, even a small bait with a small hook, light line, but it, it transitions into some great backbone. It's just a heavy duty rod. It comes at a, you know, a very affordable price point sitting in that 250 range. Uh, so you match that up with a pen fathom, you've got a rod and reel that's gonna let you catch fish for a long time. When we get into like our, our sinker rig setups, we wanna fly line some bait, maybe throw a, a rubber band sinker rig. That's something that, uh, we're seeing a lot of, you know, you go from fly lining and then throw a sinker on and then 
the blue fins start floating again, we pull the sinkers back off. We want something that's going to accommodate both of that, the, both of those styles of fishing on a on the fly. This is another rod. My the Calstar 800H is a rod that, if you know me, you know it goes with me almost everywhere. It's the line rating on there is 3060 again. Pull on those rods and just make sure that you know what you're you're, you're pulling on and, and it feels comfortable to you. But this rod fits on my 15T. I fish it a lot for that 40, 50, 60 pound even. Uh, it's a good, it's a fast action rod, a decent springy tip that lets me cast even a small bait on heavier line out. Very lightweight and sensitive. Um, just another solid option for catching these bluefin. From there, we're gonna bump up to something just a tiny bit shorter. Again, we're staying in that seven and a half foot range. This is gonna bump us up into fishing something like, you know, our Torque 40, Fathom 40, something that's gonna let us fish that 60, 80 pound comfortably. This particular rod is the Phoenix Axis. Again, every brand makes an option. This one's rated 40 to 100. So again, you can kind of see what I'm doing. The line ratings are falling in the middle of what the rod's rated for. So fishing 60 and 80 pound on here is pretty comfortable. Sinker rigs again. Maybe we have a designated sinker rig rod where we want to get this bait down to 300 feet. We know those fish are a little bit bigger and we want some more pulling power. Uh, the Phoenix Axis is a, is a great option in that 40 to 100 line rating. Uh, they come in at right at that $350 range. Just another solid quality option rod. After that, it's a toss up. Uh, when you come to here and you wanna talk about rail rods, all the rail rods, any rod is a rail rod. That's, that's a, a rail rod is a rod you can put on the rail. A tradition, like a rail rod that they're actually wrapping and advertising as a rail rod is gonna be a rod that comes with a longer foregrip. So you can see on these rods, they're gonna come with a, a very extended foregrip. Uh, that's going to be so that you have a little bit more ease of putting this rod on the rail without the blank touching the, the, the rail. Because once the blank starts touching the rail and rubbing on it, you could possibly break that blank right there. So we really want to have something cushioned on that rail. So that's going to be the foregrip. Let that foregrip get beat up. We can always replace a foregrip. But once that blank breaks, that's it. That's broken. And you can see... We're gonna showcase it here. This is just your traditional Southern California rod. You know, it's standard, standard foregrip, 14 to 16 inches. Um, and you can see how much shorter that is uh, sitting there at about, you know, three, three and a half, three and a half, four inches shorter than the rail rod grip. United Composite, Calstar, Phoenix, these are some of my favorites. They have very similar actions. This is something, I have a rail system set up here at the shop. It's the average height of a normal sport boat rail. We break it out, we pull on the rods, and you guys can really make a decision comparing the brands without somebody pushing a specific brand towards you. So it just sounds like, uh, just like with the reels, um, they have, there's gonna be a lot of different varying selections for the line classes. Mm -hmm. So you just want to fit the line class of reel that you have with the appropriate rod. Yep. And even with the rod that's in that line class, 30 to 50, there's gonna be a variety of different rods in that line class that are gonna be specific for different applications and also cater towards different people. Yes. So yeah, so just once again, uh, make sure you come into the shop, talk to Anthony or one of the people here at Save On um, or just any local tackle shop, um, support your local tackle shop no matter what. And if you found this video helpful, check out this video that talked about our favorite yellowtail rods and reels that we recorded a little while ago. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, tie lines.